Hello first graders! My name is Megan and I will be your scientist buddy for this unit. I wish I could be with you in the classroom right now, uh, but I'm very grateful that we are still able to learn together while keeping each other safe at the same time. I'm so excited to share with you all the wonderful ways that science can be seen in the world around us. But first, I want to tell you guys a little bit about me. As I said before, my name is Megan and I use she, her pronouns. I'm a sophomore in college, which basically means that I'm in 14th grade. I study biology, um, which means I study all parts of science and nature all at the same time. Uh, in my classes, I study things so small that you can't even see them with just your eyes. And I also study things as big as you can think of, like the big blue whale. I am also learning to speak American Sign Language, or ASL. This is how people who have trouble hearing are able to talk and share their ideas. I'm going to teach you all some signs throughout our lessons together, so hopefully you can share what you've learned in a new way. A lot of time, but when I'm not in class, I like to cook and bake new things. I grew up learning to cook with my dad, and now I like to cook with my friends, too. I am a vegetarian, which means that I almost never eat meat. Don't get me wrong, I love bacon just as much as the next guy, but it's been a fun challenge to try and cook with new ingredients. I actually found my new favorite food, veggie chicken nuggets. I think you guys should try them. Being outside is one of my favorite things to do, because there's just so much to explore and something always new to find. I like traveling to new places and learning all about how they are different, or the same from the places I already know. This is a picture of the coolest thing I've ever done, which is climb this big, big mountain with some of my friends. Believe me, first graders, it was not easy. But when I saw that view from the top, it was all worth it. What is your guys' favorite place to travel? It doesn't have to be far away. It could be as close as your own backyard. That's enough about me. Next, we're gonna talk about who can be a scientist. To start, I'm going to teach you all the sign in sign language for scientists so we can practice together as we learn. Are you ready, first graders? Okay. The sign for scientist is... Okay, I'm going to do it one more time. I like to think of it as pouring chemicals into a beaker to study. Now you all can say, I am a scientist. Great work, you guys. So who can be a scientist? First graders, what comes to your mind when you think of the word scientist? When I was younger, I would think of a man with big curly white hair, working in a lab with lots of colorful liquid and funny bottles, just like the sign we learned. I would also think of my mom. My mom worked in a hospital and used science to make people feel better. Okay, so, you know, so we know that moms and men with big white hair can be scientists. Who else? Let's talk about two more very different scientists that have both done some pretty cool things. Okay, first graders, the first scientist we're gonna talk about is Jane Cook Wright. Jane Cook Wright was one of the first female African-American doctors and did a lot of important research about cancer and how to make sick people with cancer feel better. She actually did a lot of work with her dad, which must have been a lot of fun. At that time, black women in science were not given the respect they deserved, but Jane was able to ignore those people who told her she couldn't succeed and was still able to save many lives with her work. Our next scientist is Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking did a lot of research about the universe and black holes, basically how science works in space. Stephen Hawking had a pretty serious illness that made him have to use a wheelchair and other machines to get through his day. Despite this big challenge, he was still able to share his ideas and inspire many other scientists around the world. So you see, first graders, the answer to our question, who can be a scientist, is actually so simple. Anyone can be a scientist. It doesn't matter your shape, size, color, where you live, or anything else, as long as you have a question and want to find the answer. I want you to remember this, okay? Okay, let it sink into your brain, rub it around if that helps. Each and every one of you is a scientist already. And I think that's pretty cool, and I hope you guys do too. Remember the sign that we learned earlier? For scientist? Let's all say, I am a scientist together. All right, I'm gonna go first, and then we can do it as a class. Okay, ready first graders? 
I am a scientist. All right, now all together. I am a scientist. Great job, you guys. Okay, everyone, it's time to talk about plants and animals. But before we do that, we have to figure out what it means for something to be alive. Let's take a look at something and decide what if it is living or not living. Don't be afraid to get the wrong answer. I promise at the end of this lesson, you'll be able to do it like this. Okay, so let's take a look at this plant in this pot. So is the plant alive or is the pot alive? Which one is not alive? What helped you decide your answer? I'm going to give you 30 seconds to discuss your answers together. All right, so let's talk about what makes something living. There are five things that something needs to be living, and let's go through them together now. The first thing something needs to be living is that they need to move around. This could be a bird flying in the sky or a tree swaying in the wind. The next thing living things need to be able to do is grow and change during their life. I'm sure you all have gotten bigger and stronger since you were kindergartners. Same thing happens with all living things. Okay, so we know that living things need to be able to move around and they need to be able to grow. The next thing they need to do is something we are all doing right now, breathing. Living things need to breathe, whether that be on land like us or underwater like the fish in the sea. Living things also need to be able to reproduce. Now that's a big word, but it basically means that they need to be able to make more living things just like themselves. Think of this as a mama dog having puppies or a mama cat having kittens, which makes more dogs and more cats to play with. <laughs> Very last thing that we need to be living creatures is food and water. These things keep us alive and give our bodies energy and other good stuff that helps us grow and change. That's all five things. If you can't remember them all right now, that's okay. We're gonna go through them again right now to decide whether our plant right here is living or not. Okay, so what was our first thing to look for? That's right, we have to decide whether plants move or not. Now this is a tricky question because plants don't really have arms or legs like we do. But they can still move using their roots which they use to find food and sunlight. Okay, so we know that plants can move. Next up, do plants grow? Of course they do. I think we've all seen flowers bloom and trees grow taller from the teeny seeds they started as. This plant used to be just about this big, and now look at it. Writers, this next one is also kind of tricky. Do plants breathe? They do. Plants don't have lungs like we do. They actually breathe through their leaves, right? Do plants reproduce? Yes. If they didn't, we wouldn't have new flowers or new trees every spring and summer. Okay, first graders, we're almost there. Our last question is, do plants need food and water to survive? Well, I water this plant almost every day and it uses the sun to make food. So the answer is yes. Great job, first graders. I think we can all agree based on the five things we learned that this plant is alive, just like you and me. Okay, now let's answer our second question. Is this pot that the plant is in, is this alive? I think you all know the answer, but let's test it using the five things that we know you need to be living, just to be sure. Okay, so let's pick a random one. Um, okay. Can this pot breathe? Well, I don't know about you first graders, but I don't see a mouth, lungs, leaves, or anything else that would help it breathe. So since this pot does not breathe, it is not alive. Well, that was easy. Okay, first graders, we're going to play a sorting game right now. We're going to sort these six items into either the living box or the non-living box, okay? And we're gonna do this based on the five things that we learned to determine if something is alive. All right, 
So the first thing we're gonna sort is this butterfly. So I'm gonna bring it to the middle here. So is a butterfly alive? Let's see. I mean, it can move around using its wings. It can breathe. It can make more butterflies. It needs food, water. I think it's alive. What do you guys think? Great. All right. First thing in the living box, butterfly. Okay, let's do this soccer ball. Bring it to the middle. Is this soccer ball alive? Can this soccer ball breathe? Does this, will this soccer ball make more soccer ball babies? Hmm, I don't think so, first graders. Okay, so this is gonna go in this non-living box. Perfect. All right, what should we do next? Let's do this fish. All right, move it to the middle. So the fish is gonna be a lot like the butterfly, right? Because they're both animals. So this fish can grow, it can make more baby fish, it can move around using its fins and tail. And this fish can actually breathe underwater using its gills. All right, so I guess this fish is living. Great job, guys. What should we do next? Let's do the sandcastle. All right, so a sandcastle made of sand. Can sand move around on its own without you picking it up or the wind blowing it? Mm, not really. It doesn't have legs or roots or anything like that. So that means that this sandcastle is non-living. All right, so we'll put it right here next to the soccer ball. The next thing is this cactus. Now this cactus is a lot like the plant that I showed you guys earlier. It can use its roots to move around. It gets energy from the sun. It breathes out through its leaves. Well, in this case, it's sharp pointy things. Do you guys think this cactus is alive? Yeah, I think so too. So we'll put it right down here next to the fish. All right, last thing is are these books. All right, can books breathe? Can books make more books? Do books need food and water to survive? Well, I've never fed a book before and it seems to, seems to stay there pretty much the same either way. So I think that means that it's non-living. All right, great job, you guys. I hope this helped you kind of see more, some things that are living. You can recognize, you know, tails and wings that can help things move um, and things that need water and food to survive over here. And these non-living things that kind of just stay put when we don't move them around, um, they don't breathe, um, they're not alive. Great job with today's lesson. We were able to learn so much together from who can be a scientist and how to say scientist in sign language to the five things needed to be living or non-living. Can you guys list all of the five things? It's okay if you forgot some. Here's another quick review for you guys before we go. I had so much fun with you all today and I hope you did too. I'm gonna teach you one more sign to wrap up our lesson today. I'm gonna teach you the sign for alive. Okay, the sign for alive goes like this. Give me two big thumbs up and pull them towards your head like this. All right, let's do it again. Alive like this. You guys got it. Now that you can, you can say that you are alive and that you are a scientist. Great job. If you guys have any questions about what we learned today or anything else that comes to your brains, I would love to answer them for you. You can send them to me in the Google Doc or as a Flipgrid video, and I will answer them the next time we meet together. Thank you all for being so patient and kind during today's lesson. Remember to stay safe and stay curious. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.